So thank you all for joining us uh, today. Um, we are very happy to, you know, to organize this session. Uh, uh, what we wanted to achieve with this session is to give you another overview and discover, you know, the work that the European Commission uh, through initiatives as starts and I4MS uh, is working towards, you know, the, the new experimentations and new processes uh, that help uh, the digital innovation. So uh, the webinar today, the main objectives we had is, um, you know, to share with you, uh, to give you an overview of how a STARTS initiative uh, and I4MS support the collaboration between science, technology and arts. Uh, STARTS is an initiative that uh, fosters the alliance between science, technology and arts. I think this is a very, um, you know, innovative approach that we wanted to share with you because uh, usually in I4MS we are much more focused on manufacturing process so we thought that organizing something together will give you uh, another view on how arts uh, can contribute to new processes in, in specific sectors uh, and also you know to how to how to combine the artistic uh, viewpoint uh, and also some additional valuable perspectives uh, in research business uh, and uh, and manufacturing sectors. Okay, so this is uh, the main uh, objective for today. I hope that you enjoy the presentations. And uh, together with us, we have uh, uh, projects and Beta Factory, which are the projects under Starts and I4MS uh, that are incorporating this new approach into the uh, project uh, into their projects implementation. Okay. So uh, together with me in the first part of the of the agenda, I will be with uh, Aurelie de la Terre. Uh, she's project coordinator at Innova. Uh, she's also senior consultant uh, at Innova, and she's in charge of uh, Starts in Motion initiatives. And uh, her focus lies on the fields of creative industry, arts, and technology. Uh, and uh, well, we we started our conversations in uh, uh, last year, and we discovered, you know, that uh, although we have under our own umbrella two different projects, we, you know, were a bit far from from each other. That's why we decided to start some conversations and see how we can, you know. Uh, enrich our ecosystem with different approaches and that that is the result of these talks and these conversations is this first webinar uh, that we do hope uh, we will continue in future in future events and uh, i will be also introducing ui for mx uh, my name is maria roca i'm project manager at funding box uh, and i have been uh, working in digital transformation projects for already seven years now so I will start with a brief presentation of what is I4MS for those that are not familiar, and then I will give you the I will give the floor to Aurelie. Okay, I will be introducing uh, the other speakers that are with us uh, today uh, before the sessions. You can see their pictures, and we will be sharing also the the videos uh, in the follow up email together with all the presentation. So having said that, what is I4MS? So I4MS is an initiative promoted by the European Commission. Our main uh, objective is uh, you know, to support manufacturing SMEs in their digital transformation process. We are currently in the fourth phase where we are trying to enlarge the ecosystem and connect with uh, digital innovation hubs in order to help us in our mission uh, that is to support manufacturing SMEs. And how we do this? So we have our, uh, um, within I4MS, uh, eight different projects. Those projects are led by uh, leading edge uh, RTOs and research organizations in Europe and are the ones supporting SMEs uh, with funding opportunities, with technological support and expertise uh, in four different uh, technological verticals that you can see here. I4MS is focused on digital twins in uh, human robot interaction, artificial intelligence, and additive manufacturing. Okay, 
So uh, you can visit our website to get more information about all the projects. Today we will be discovering more about Beta Factory and projects. And as I said, uh, one uh, of mechanisms that we use to support SMEs is through the funding opportunities. You can see here a calendar of the open calls. Uh, and uh, in our website, you will find all information about the open calls. So also, uh, we know how difficult it is to navigate through all these uh, project names and initiatives. So in case you have questions, you, we have a brokering system uh, that you can send your, your questions about which is the best mechanism for you, and we will help you. Uh, well, also, uh, as uh, in this event, we are promoting, uh, you know, uh, projects and factories. We have also organized some other events in the future that uh, we wish uh, that you could join. And uh, having said that, uh, Aurelie, now is your turn to present start. So please, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Maria, for this introduction and for inviting us today to organize this event together. Uh, so I will present Stars. Um, Stars, as Maria said, is an initiative from the European Commission created by five, uh, six years ago now uh, to support collaborations between science, technology and the arts. Uh, next, please. So um, I think uh, there is a slide in the middle that is missing before this one, no? Okay, strange. Uh, so I will, uh, I will tell you <laughs> anyway. Um, so uh, STARTS is uh, not a program, uh, is an initiative from the DG Connect. And so the intention is to support these collaborations and uh, these uh, residencies or long-term collaborations or at least exchanges uh, between scientists, technologists uh, and the arts. Uh, and we make this through uh, different projects and uh, different pillars. So there are um, in every project, let's say, uh, funded by DigiConnect, uh, some uh, recurrent activities uh, that are now considered as good practices uh, in starts uh, to foster these alliances and innovation uh, between science, technology and the arts. And so I will now explain you what are uh, these pillars. Uh, so you can go, yeah. So this, the first one is a STARTS prize that awards every year uh, some pioneering and outstanding collaborations uh, in the field of creativity and innovation. Uh, it is led by Ars Electronica in Austria, uh, I think now for five, five years. And um, in fact, uh, the winners of this year have been announced uh, yesterday. So you, you can go and see uh, in the Ars Electronica uh, website uh, what kind of projects are awarded. Uh, this year, it's um, very uh, linked to uh, data protection, uh, water management, uh, and uh, environment, I would say, protection of environment. Uh, and every year, it's a different kind of projects that always link uh, the art or the design with technology. Uh, then we have, I think, yeah, start residencies. So start residencies, it's really the idea that uh, technologists, uh, scientists and artists are spending time together to collaborate and to uh, co-create new solutions, new projects. So we have a very different kind of uh, residencies within STARTS. Um, we have uh, like uh, two months residencies, six months, one year. Um, and uh, the, the objective is not always the same. And I think this is one of the things that is very uh, unique in STARTS is that we have this diversity of type of collaborations. We don't have uh, one model, uh, but every project is uh, free uh, to innovate in this, uh, in this sense. And you will see that in Better Factory and in projects, uh, there are two different kinds of collaborations, but there are also others in the, in the topic, for example, of architecture uh, linked to emotions 
also uh, in reframe uh, to rethink fashion in a more uh, ethical and sustainable way. Uh, we have also very uh, more conceptual projects exploring the human. Uh, we have music. Um, we have um, we have biotech, health tech, uh, digital solutions for museums. There is a really uh, diversity uh, in the, in the kind of uh, collaborations that are led in starts. Then I think we go through yeah thematic pilots. Uh, so as I just said. Um, there is different kinds of collaborations within STARS that are represented by different projects. And see, if you go in STARS.eu, you will see that uh, in the section what we do, there it all explains the kind of collaborations uh, that are supported and the kind of projects and solutions uh, that are created by these collaborations between artists uh, and, uh, and tech and science. And so uh, uh, there are projects that are uh, really focusing on one thematic. And then if you go to the other slide, uh, there is also a, a, a dimension of uh, regional. This is something new that has created uh, two years ago in STARTS because it, uh, it, be it began really at the European level. And now the intention of the Commission is really to install uh, in every, uh, not every region of Europe, but in many regions, uh, start centers that are both uh, physical and digital. So the idea is that now you have in Europe, I would say more than 15 centers uh, where you can go and you have um, these hubs where uh, you can meet if you are a designer, if you are a musician, uh, if you are a, a, a painter, you can go and meet <clears throat> with scientists and technologists and really uh, discuss, exchange, but also engage uh, in collaborations. And the intention is that uh, these centers will multiply and also will communicate uh, with other projects and digital innovation hubs that are also um, created in regions. Then to the next slide, uh, another dimension of STARS, which is really important, is STARS Academy. So this is the educational side of STARS. <coughs> and the intention <coughs> sorry, is that uh, artists uh, and, uh, and the persons, uh, institutions, but also individuals that are participating in STARS projects, uh, they go and meet the young generation to educate them and raise awareness um, re regarding the topics that are explored uh, in starts, but also to, um, I think, to foster this idea uh, that the arts um, should be integrated and that there is a lot of potential to integrate the arts in digital innovation. So this is another activity uh, that we do at starts. Next, please. Uh, so I won't explain uh, what are the projects because you will know them uh, after, but uh, you should know also that uh, STARTS uh, is funding part of the budget, let's say, of digital innovation hubs. And the idea is to integrate uh, artist and artistic um, perspective uh, in projects, in digital innovation hubs uh, that are related to uh, manufacturing, to construction, uh, to um, artificial intelligence and robotics, and also to media. So the idea is really also to explore this new dimension uh, in a new perspective. Next, please. So I would say that if you have to remind maybe something of starts uh, is the idea that um, by uh, bringing this artistic perspective uh, in the innovation uh, and in the digital, um, we create provoking and visionary prototypes and solutions. So the, the, the fact that uh, the artist will contribute or will co-create a project, he will bring, of course, with him, uh, with her, um, his uh, critical eye on the technology um, and develop projects that are human-centered. This is really something that is important uh, in starts. 
uh, and also um, advocate for a green and sustainable economy, create new business models uh, that are ethical and uh, that uh, can shape uh, the economy of the future. Uh, and very, very briefly, if we can go to the next slides, uh, I, we are now a very big community uh, with uh, more than 120 um, uh, partners across Europe, um, a lot of artists, tech and, tech and uh, scientists uh, submitting projects and awarded with projects. Um, I think in the next slide you can always say, uh, you can also see that uh, we gather a community that is over uh, seven uh, thousand members, so it's growing and growing, and uh, uh, very happy to see this happening because now it's very uh, it's it's really a movement uh, that is taking an importance uh, in Europe. And uh, also, I take the occasion to tell you that um, I, uh, I am the manager of a, of a program that is called Starts in Motion, uh, where we supported um, uh, Starts projects to go to the market. Uh, so let's see this as a, as a Starts Accelerator, really designed uh, to, to support uh, these new business models and that we organize an event uh, on the on June 30th, which is Start in Motion Day, and uh, you are all kindly invited. It will be very inspiring because the projects, uh, the 20 projects that we supported, will uh, pitch uh, and uh, and promote their um, their project. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Aureli. So now it's time uh, for Natalia, Serena, and Marta. Uh, from Beta Factories. Oops, sorry, I went uh, very fast. Uh, just to let you know some, uh, you know, information about the speakers uh, that uh, will be presented at Beta Factory now. Natalia is uh, ha holds a bachelor degree in communication uh, and also masters in journalism and digital content innovation. Uh, she has worked for the past two years in journalism and is now marketing lead for European projects at the Mobile World Capital Barcelona. Uh, Serena is an industrial engineer with a master's degree in logistics and operation management at Politecnico di Milano, and she worked as a consulting as functional analyst for technological consulting services uh, since uh, the beginning of her career. And uh, also Marta Cotto, uh, who is um, a master's degree in hazards, cities and spatial planning from the University of Porto. Uh, and also she, she's senior project manager at Innova. She works together with Aurelie. And with the past 10 years, she has been uh, cooperating and coordinating the participation of EU projects. So uh, Natalia, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Maria. And thank you, Aurelie, for the introduction. And my name is Natalia Cardona, as Maria mentioned. And I'm going to introduce you to the Better Factory, Better Factory Initiative. So what is Better Factory? Uh, well, we are an initiative funded under the European Commission Horizon 2020 program. And what we aim for or what we look for is we look for European manufacturing companies, artists or designers with an industrial background and technology suppliers to come together and engage in a set of collaborative experiments in order to redesign the manufacturer product or services portfolio. Our project enables these manufacturing SMEs to enter new markets and become more globally competitive with customizable products or services. The artists and designers will have the chance to create new business models and reach new prospective clients through this project. And the technology suppliers will have the chance to reach out for new potential customers and test Uh, I think with their solutions and technologies in real life situations with a low finance risk for them. Okay, so we have identified um, four main challenges, and we we call them well. The first one is the creativity challenges. SMEs need uh, to reinvent their products for customization, but it, but it has to be done around their knowledge. Of, of the field and of the market and of the, of the things they know what to do. 
uh, we have the Lean Agile Challenge. It's the need for these uh, traditional factories to transform their processes into Lean Agile processes and connect their factories into cyber physical systems. We have the investment challenges in order for the manufacturing companies to work with together with artists and test new solutions. They will need access to finance. And finally, the skills challenge is that this transformational process of the factories requires a restructuring of the strategic thinking, the planning, the simulation of the company, but also to reskill their staff inside the factory. Next slide, please. Okay, what, what do we aim for? Well, for these collaborations uh, to work and deliver the outcomes and results expected, uh, we will focus on a technical level in minimizing the impact of the cost of production and create more value for the manufacturers by reducing waste, energy, and other resources, uh, by optimizing the factory logistics, by using robots to support the workers in their activities, and optimizing production pre-planning and simulation. And we are mainly focused on six sectors, plastic and rubber, furniture and wood, food and agriculture, construction, metal and machinery, and textile and leather. These are the sectors that we are going to prioritize and help the most with our project. Next slide. Okay, so how will we do it? We have this knowledge transfer program and each of these selected experiments are known as knowledge transfer experiments. What's a KT, a knowledge transfer experiment? Well, it's the union between these three stakeholders, the manufacturing company, the tech supplier, and their artists. They will come together to develop a new product or service, and they will have support of a technical mentor, an art mentor, and a business mentor. And they will go through a process of technology transfer and through another parallel process of art transfer in order to deliver these new or personalized products as their business strategy. We will do it in two waves. We have now opened our first open call uh, where the beneficiaries can receive up to 200,000 euros. We will support the transformation of these traditional manufacturing companies into cyber physical systems. They will start their knowledge transfer program with the support I explained before. So what are the applicants that we're looking for? We're looking for consortiums composed by one manufacturing company, one artist, and one technology supplier that can enter this process of digital transformation. Our open call is available until July 15th. That's the deadline for you to present your proposal. And if you want to know more on how to submit your idea or just general information about Better Factory, then you can visit our web at betterfactory.eu. And that's it on my side. And I'll give the floor to Serena, and she'll explain like the more technical side of our project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Natalia. One question: In case that uh, we have yes. people interested here in the in the meeting, uh, but they have not this consortium, can they contact you in order to to look for potential partners to submit a project? They can contact us or they can contact Marta, which okay. is actually in charge of the process of generating, creating these teams. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Natalia. You're welcome. So, Serena. Yes. Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Serena Albertario, and uh, as anticipated, I'm involved uh, in uh, Better Factory project as a work package leader of uh, uh, the main task in which we are going to uh, develop the APPS. Uh, what is APPS? APPS is a system uh, made in order to provide uh, an infrastructure uh, in order to enable all uh, manufacturing SME uh, to use use some uh, artificial intelligence uh, technologies. And uh, uh, for this uh, um, reason, uh, we have four main uh, blocks, let's say, that are the cognitive HRI, 
the logistics automation and optimization, the resource optimization and production reconfiguration. So as you can see, uh, we are going to offer to uh, manufacturing uh, SME uh, several kind of uh, technologies that could be applied uh, in four main uh, sectors, let's say. Uh, we will uh, um, reach the company connecting uh, this uh, system with their uh, uh, devices, with with their sensors, so with uh, their environment. And uh, in this way, we will be able to gather data and to um, provide some services in order to improve um, some kind of activities uh, that they are constantly doing uh, in their company. Um, now we are going to see with um, some more details uh, what we, are, we, we, we mean with each specific block. Uh, first of all, I said that we have the Cognitive HRI. Uh, thanks to this uh, module, we are going to support uh, human-machine collaboration, uh, combining some uh, um, technologies with uh, the human flexibilities. So, for example, uh, we will involve uh, some activities and technologies like uh, fatigue monitoring system, intervention manager, pose recognition and correction. This means that uh, we will uh, um, gather data uh, from uh, operators, uh, from devices that, uh, for example, are uh, worn by uh, operator or uh, from sensors that are in the uh, production environment. And thanks, uh, uh, thanks to this uh, data gathering, uh, we will be able to monitor uh, the fatigue that an operator is going to have. Uh, we will uh, uh, suggest some uh, intervention that could um, improve uh, the way to work. Then uh, we will have the second block that is the logistics and automation. Uh, as uh, uh, it suggests, uh, we are going to talk about uh, optimization uh, of uh, uh, the way um, to, uh, to use root agents and materials flow uh, during our daily production. Uh, for this reason, we will involve some technologies like, for example, agent optimization, material flow. So we are going to see all uh, the flow that we have in a company and we are going to optimize how we are going how uh, companies use uh, their resources and uh, um, suggesting some type of uh, flow uh, then we will have the resource optimization block uh, and uh, uh, this model will be the one that uh, will uh, guarantee to all the companies an optimization of resources in terms of time and cost and energy and waste. So once again, we will better get uh, from, uh, um, from uh, the environment, from uh, the daily using uh, of a, a company uh, of resources and we will suggest some optimization. This will be guaranteed uh, through um, two main technologies that, has, uh, that are the business process optimization and the production optimization. And Grafana will be a tool that is already involved in uh, RAMP uh, that enable to visualize the data and to have some graphics and um, it enables also to make some uh, data analytics. At the end, we have the fourth block. Um, yes, that is the production reconfiguration. And uh, uh, the production reconfiguration refers to uh, the reconfiguration of a production line and to all the tasks that are uh, automated or semi-automated because we have uh, some human sectors for sure. Uh, so uh, the idea in this block is to uh, reconfigure the way uh, companies are going to produce. And also uh, we are going to offer some personalization of the product. Продолжение следует... 
then uh, in this presentation uh, I have uh, inserted some uh, examples uh, of uh, uh, the technology of the four main blocks um, for example the first one about uh, cognitive uh, human uh, robot interaction means that uh, we are going to interact between cobot and the human uh, so we are going to for example uh, um, make operators uh, wearing some devices and uh, um, thanks to to uh, the data coming directly from the work and operator, we are going to, um, to see uh, the fatigue, we are going to uh, suggest how uh, will be the, uh, could be the interaction. Then, uh, next, yes, uh, the idea in fact uh, is that we are going to monitor some human para parameters and to detect uh, some uh, um, some worker uh, way to um, to work, for example, to correct the posture of uh, um, an operator or things like that. Then in the second block, yes, anticipated, we are going to talk about logistics and optimization. So, for example, we will have uh, a logistics library uh, that will be able to uh, catch several different elements from the shop floor and to suggest some way to improve the logistics of the uh, material flow and so on. Then we have the third block. Yes, that is the one about resource optimization and anticipated. The idea is always also always the same: uh, real-time da uh, data gathering and then a visualization of that, in which we are going to suggest how to optimize uh, resources. Um, in this uh, picture, you can see some screens. Um, uh, taken by uh, Grafana, uh, so you can see that we have a constantly uh, monitoring of uh, the resources. And uh, at the end, the four, yes, uh, yes, this is the business process optimization. So the idea is let's take some data as input and thanks uh, to uh, task planner, task specific parser communication, we are going to suggest some output that is, for example, an uh, optimized task planner. Yes, next. Yes, and the end we have uh, an example from production reconfiguration, and uh, as anticipated, uh, it means that uh, thanks to uh, technologies uh, like auto reconfiguration, uh, assignment of tasks to um, equipment and to workers, and using of uh, uh, 3D uh, twin or factory line, we are going to customize and personalize some products, uh, trying to um, merge uh, always a better. Uh, um, the way to work uh, of our companies. Uh, so I've been very faster because uh, we are not uh, enough time, but uh, the main idea is to offer in Better Factory this system uh, that has several blocks and uh, task, thanks to these several blocks, uh, um, uh, companies could uh, use it to improve uh, some of uh, their way to work. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you, Serena. So now it's time for Marta Cotto that will give us some insights about the artistic perspective in Better Factory. So Marta, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here. So I just want to say that uh, Aureli made a great job uh, by present also explaining the artistic perspective and make my job easier. And then also Natalia explained very well the, the objectives of Better Factory. So, um, explaining the Arctic's perspective, uh, as you can see in that, uh, in that sentence, uh, indeed, uh, it was artists who envisioned and produced photographic technologies, and it was also artists who first foresaw a world in which individuals might fly. And it will continue to be uh, artists that will um, create a different perspective, indeed, bringing the creative uh, creativity uh, into the the world um, more uh, rational, we might say. And uh, now we have more and more uh, high tech companies that indeed say that uh, in addition to scientific and technological skills, uh, critical skills needed for innovation, one of the most important is indeed uh, creativity. And we all know that creativity is very rooted in artistic practices. 
And so uh, the uh, creativity can indeed uh, influence innovation in technology um, and can influence uh, innovation here in, in, in better factory um, experiences. That's what we, we expect. And we have that experience from, from start that is more based uh, in the science and technology. Uh, but then here in Vector Factory, we are going to have the experience of artists to work uh, with SMEs, so with manufacturing SMEs, and then also with um, technology suppliers. So by saying this, um, we know that uh, expressing the wish to collaborate with artists is one thing, but actually to build a successful cross-disciplinary collaboration is another thing completely different and it needs preparation, clear objectives uh, and a suitable methodology. And so uh, we know and we, we have defined it that it can uh, happen uh, four types of uh, different collaborative projects um, with artists. And we are focusing in better factory projects and, and the KTEs in two different ones that are the challenge driven collaborative uh, uh, projects and the mission driven. Uh, and so by saying this, the, the artists are going to be responsible to uh, respond to uh, product challenges. So the technology, the, the technology suppliers are going to respond to uh, more process related challenges in the um, knowledge transfer experiments with the SMEs and the artists are going to respond to product challenges um, along with the SMEs. The SMEs are going to define these challenges uh, along with the artists and then present them in the fruit proposal template. And then they are going to run all these uh, challenges throughout the all 16 months of the uh, knowledge transfer experiment. Uh, next slide, slide, please. And then we have two different routes, like I said, um, on these uh, knowledge transfer experiments, we have the challenge driven uh, and the mission driven. Uh, you can please click more. Okay, so the challenge driven is the more direct, direct uh, challenges that the artists are going to respond concerning uh, product portfolio innovation because these challenges are um, going to involve other artists directly in addressing uh, a new product development. So uh, a more direct challenges um, that are better well defined and with an outcome that is of course a new product use case so product diversification in the mission driven uh, it's a more long-term uh, challenge that they have to to respond along uh, during the kta and this is more uh, it's a more uh, broad and not defined problem that are, they need to respond uh, by a mission for example to try to create new things with plastic and reduce the the, the leftovers if we are talking about plastic uh, manufacturing for example so they need to explore new paths to progress um, and so uh, the artist created expected output for these KTAs. Uh, they will indeed uh, address in the first uh, moment the product challenge defined by the SMEs. They will collaborate with the SMEs together from the beginning, and but they will have the help of the art mentors because like we said, uh, and we all know artists and uh, SMEs uh, are not used to work together. They are becoming more and more uh, used to it and that's great. Um, but they need to uh, they need to to sometimes need the help to to help understand the the different uh, ways that uh, SMEs and, and artists talk and so that's why art mentors are here to to help so facilitate their observations and probing in manufacturing space mapping the relations co-thinking and finally prototyping and during the KTAs, the, the process will be they will work out with the SMEs uh, in uh, several workable cons concepts in a, a cycle that can be repeated multiple times uh, until they come with a final, uh, a final out output and a final uh, design product. And so uh, I just have two different uh, examples of what can uh, 
happen and what can be the outputs of these collaborations for example we have here um, an example of an innovative uh, product developed by an artist the artist is John Carmen that uh, developed a, a techable parasite that is alias. This is designed to give uh, users more control of their smart assistants, both when it comes to customizing and privacy. So you can you can uh, go to the website to understand more. So Alias will make sure that the assistant is paralyzed and unable to listen by interrupting its microphone. So this is one thing that app, uh, artists can help um, build when we talked uh, about products and then another example could be the product portfolio innovation and then we have a case uh, from uh, ikea for example so in this this is a concept in which the first models are made by hand by the artist and then they are used to make molds um, which in, ter uh, in turn uh, are then used to produce large quantities and then the possibilities of making products in large series, but yet at the same time they retain uh, some unique uh, characteristics. So this can be the way of making products in a large series. So at the same time with this unique character of uh, looking like um, pieces of an artist. And we all uh, know how this happens in, in uh, IKEA, for example, that we have uh, a product and we have the, the, they are signed by an artist. Of course, the artist doesn't make all the, all the products, but they start with the, with the first one. And then this is a, a new route that can be created and thinking and uh, designed by the artist. Uh, so, uh, as you can, uh, as you can, uh, could see here, um, on the artist side, this is not so uh, well defined as in the technology suppliers. It's more uh, open, so they can uh, work uh, in the challenges that is challenges uh, concerning the products on the six clusters that um, uh, Natalia explains before and the, the challenges could be very wide and very uh, various we don't know the the challenges that might might appear we could talk more about this when the kitties are approved so in uh, september we will have uh, eight kitties approved and hopefully next year uh, we'll have another uh, eight kitties to be uh, run so that's it Thank you. And if you want Thank to know more, and like uh, Natalia explained, and like Maria uh, asked, um, the calls are still open until 15 of July. We are now working with uh, some participants that have applied to the matchmaking process. We are trying to create consortiums and we are helping them building the full proposal template. But then the open calls so are open to everyone. And so they can uh, apply and we can also offer some some support to these ones who want to apply. OK, so thank, thank you. you, Marta. We will keep an eye on uh, the evaluation process and the selection process to discover those uh, kitties that uh, for sure will bring uh, very nice innovations to the to the manufacturing process. So it's now time to move to the projects project uh, that today is represented by the Shenya Beltran and Miha Tursik. Uh, Shenya is a senior R&D project manager and head of big data in life tech and projects project coordinators. Her areas of interest are AI, analytics, and decision support systems. And in the case of Miha, is a concept and project developer within MAKE, program of WAC. And he works on international collaborative research and innovation projects involving art science, open source hardware, and digital fabrication. So, uh, Shenya, uh, please tell us more about projects and, and uh, what is the offer that you have within your project. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, Good morning, and thank you for being today here, sharing this morning with us. Okay, I'm Sinia Beltran, as commented by Maria from Polytechnical University of Madrid. And I will be presenting during the next uh, minute, okay, the technology and our offering uh, for SMEs. And then I will give the floor to Mija uh, to present the perspective from a start and how artists are working uh, with us. 
So Vojex. Vojex is value of joint experimentation in digital technologies for manufacturing and construction. It is a 42 months uh, H2020 project that aims at demonstrating and showcasing how adaptation, adoption, and integration of advanced digital technologies can improve the manufacturing processes at SMEs and mid caps in different sectors. Thus, provide a favorable business and technical framework for cognitive autonomous systems, supporting human robot interaction and collaborative robots in SMEs and mid caps. In the next slide, I'm going to show how we're putting together uh, all these projects, okay? I mean, one of the reasons that we want to, 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 to comment to you is why projects for SMEs, okay? Uh, because through projects, we aim at supporting SMEs and mid-caps manufacturing, integrating robotic technologies that can produce complex and small-scale production and potentially having a, an, um, uh, production systems that potentially have a number of products variants with high customization degrees. Thus, having high flexibility at production level while moving towards higher productivity rates and increasing waste reduction or better management of resources, resources consumption. So they can respond to us as consumer and we would like SMEs us to provide customized products that are brought to the door of our houses, several versions of the same product at different prices or having a wider spectrum of products in a competitive manner. So now um, you are, uh, please can you go to the, to the slides before? So our consumption, okay, includes two robotic companies, and actually one is Robotnik for mobile robotics and Shadow, which provides highly dexterous hands. Both are working together with other 18 partners to design, develop, and demonstrate affordable, market-oriented, multipurpose, and easy-to-repurpose robotic systems that can be integrated on the smart and scalable CPS ecosystem that can be deployed at SMEs and mid-caps and in the manufacturing domain. In our case, it's textile, electronics, automotive, and artisan environments, as well as in construction environments. In budgets, we're using mobile robot platforms as we're going to show a little bit in a minute in a, in a video, okay? Platform together with robotic arms and dexterous hands complementarily with pick and place devices, innovating with artists to best collaborate and support humans in tasks that are often done manually in SMEs. In this context, robotic systems will be able to follow and assist workers, pick up, hold, and carry materials from one point to another, to adopt a specific in a working place or through the shop floor, okay, By doing manipulation, grasping, and packaging. So in the next, next slide, please, we can see the video as an example. So let me open my mic. Let's Thank you. Next slide, please. For the purpose, 20 partners from 11 countries were working together in a new generation of these autonomous and cognitive robots to be deployed on factory floors in what we have five demonstrative use cases using a training methodology that allows these robots to learn different tasks in a semi-automatic manner and learning from each other and deploying these robotic systems, okay, coupled with a CPS to collect and process and exploit data from several data sources, such as sensors, actuators, and other information systems, to effectively plan and control production lines, toward optimization on the overall performance and provide nice visualization to interact with projects. Also, together with all this plan and the robots, next slide, please. We're linking that with the SMEs, okay, through a network of digital innovation hubs, four in our consortium and seven in our advisory board, and more that we aim to link for dynamizing and innovate and in an innovative uh, innovative ecosystem, uh, which 
involves new actors. Mainly, we want innovators, SMEs, and mid-caps that support and exchange knowledge with their local, regional, and national product systems. In this context, what we want, okay, is and what we aim is to not only link with them, but also to give them an opportunity through open calls. So, next slide, please. In the open calls, okay, as commented here, we're uh, using these calls to encourage promote and financially support the participation of new SMEs actors in projects for technical development or having new cases or new domains in our use cases. And we want to attract innovators to underpin new SMEs and to underpin the development of this business model supported and based on robotics. In this scope, we are covering many of the manufacturing demands, domains, and it could be discrete or continuous manufacturing or construction as such. So next slide, please. So selected participants in the open calls, okay, will be able to have services and work with us in a joint experimentation manner, okay, and shall have access to simulation platforms, mock-ups, equipment, and design and implement novel applications with us, okay, and solutions that are being developed in projects. We can go through methods in 3D reconstruction or using neuromorphic cameras for monitoring the state of the worker and aligning the robot with the worker. For example, capturing if the worker is tired, and if the worker is tired, then make the robot to work slower. And actually to have, if not, okay, machine learning for manipulation or human-robot interaction and collaboration as such. Next slide, please. Selected participants are the people winning in, in the open calls, okay, will participate through technology development in our five use cases, okay, that are represented in this slide, and actually uh, in the areas of plastic, electronic, automotive, in craft with artisans or construction, or supporting with new use cases and new domains to actually increase our se selected use cases. So having with budget parts, joint experimentation, okay, as we can show in the following video, which is an example in Bojek's experiment of moving a production system from manual to robotic in one of our SMEs, which is optimizing the process. So next slide, please. Yeah, can you click, please? It's a small video. Uh, apparently it says that something is not available so let me just stop sharing my screen and sharing again and see if it works now okay let's go it's okay thank you yeah unfortunately it's not well, working for some reason. It's a pity, but well, this, uh, this actually maybe the, the structure, and you can see in the picture, okay, we have restructured the way of working. It was a manual process. And uh, having with different, uh, let's say, areas also of, uh, of good, um, uh, of good parts to put the good parts and the bad parts, okay? The robot is able to move through all the, 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 the area in the working place, okay? And really support part of the processes. These, these are pillows, for example, okay? And select them and pick them up and put them in the, in the, in the right place, okay? And have them in the place, okay, to be uh, fully tested. Okay, we, we will make the video available in, in the website, so sorry for that, that is not working. This slide only is to, pro, to, to show the process of the open course, but what we want is to leave it with you as part of the presentation, since the presentations will be shared, okay, so you know the whole process. And next slide, please, which is last but not least, okay, we want to share uh, with you and, and connect with a big important area in projects also, which is a start initiative that were integrated. And actually for us is to get insights and participation of our consortium uh, with artists who, by the way, have very deep technological knowledge and who are helping us to success by innovating and giving new perspectives for design factors, robotic interfaces, interaction, usage context on human-robot collaboration, having maybe new attributes and especially supporting us in how to get human trust in robotic collaboration environment, which is a key factor in bodies as such. So with no delay, uh, we go to the next part of the presentation. So Miha, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Xenia. Um, yes, let's go for the next slide. Um, thanks. Uh, so what starts efforts in the VOEX projects are is mainly to understand the uh, societal perspective of robotic technologies. We know that technologies are not neutral, that are that have quite a societal impact. Um, and that's why we're trying to understand uh, what is the overlap and what are the intersections between the, the societal and technological perspectives here. Also, what we focus on <clears throat> uh, are the collaborative uh, learning and working practices in these uh, contemporary production and construction environments. <laughs> and also one of the, let's say, main challenges of the VOEX project is uh, uh, how can we contribute to the acceptance of these emerging robotic technologies. Next slide. So methodologically, usual starts uh, starts. I mean, usual starts approach is uh, that it starts with an open call for the residencies, and then most of the co-creation is done within the residency format. However, in our case, uh, we did one step ahead of the open call. Uh, we call it the collaborative exploration, uh, where we are inviting uh, all different actors that could contribute to a better understanding of the challenges or concerns um, ahead of the open call. Um, and the open call <laughs> will follow up, as you can see in the timeline, later this year. Uh, next slide. So what we focused on <laughs> in this collaborative exploration, uh, first step was to show that art is not just about painting classical music, uh, but also that artists are engaged in robotics for like, yeah, since ever. Um, also, the word robot comes from the Karel Chapex uh, play from, I think, 1930s um, uh, that stands for the um, uh, robotnik, so for workers uh, that kind of, uh, yeah, apply to the uh, production line. So in this regard, <clears throat> with this historical mind, but also contemporary one, we invited three artists, uh, Justine Emard, Patrick Trusset, and uh, Medellin Gannon to kind of uh, present how they understand, how they approach, and how they especially work with robotics uh, in artistic practice. And what came out uh, through the Start Stock event in December was that, uh, I mean, they do understand that robots have their own agency. Um, and they are asking uh, the project, so the VOEX, to uh, also think outside of this paradigm that machines or robots are controlled and kind of servants uh, in a process. Also, they address the, the topic of alienation in, uh, industri of industrial uh, labor, uh, which is one of the, let's say, problems uh, <laughs> that we are um, observing. Also, the topic of brokenness, um, so the fragility of technology, uh, but also in people involved in the technological processes. So people are broken and robots get broken. Uh, and the last <laughs> topic that they addressed um, was that there is a need uh, to address those that suffer this imbalance between um, investing into technologies uh, and not investing enough in humans uh, involved in using the technologies. Next slide. Uh, the next <laughs> format, um, we invited several artists and we interviewed them, uh, especially artists that work with robotics or manufacturing in different ways, uh, working with AI, working with VR, um, work, I mean, some of them also worked at factories um, and then produced artworks based on their experience working in factories. Um, or they are engaged in the, uh, these interfaces between robots and humans, and how do we, uh, how we each perceive each other. Um, and in this context, they highlighted several things, uh, but one of the most important one um, is that um, it's actually involvement of workers in a design and development phase. Usually, workers are perceived mainly as users of robotics, uh, in these uh, industrial areas, uh, <laughs> but uh, literally they called out as like, please involve them um, in uh, uh, also as designers, also as a, uh, I mean, 
collaborators in the innovation process. Um, and <laughs> one of the, I mean, two last observations here are that usual outcomes of starts efforts are objects of discussion. So not uh, something that is um, can be put on the market, but are objects that provide discussion about uh, not just challenges, but also concerns and maybe some urgencies uh, that usually are not so much present um, in the usual innovation process. And also that uh, artistic spaces like galleries uh, are also spaces for a public experimentation. Um, so you can also uh, produce some experiments with public, with audiences, and get quite substantial input uh, for research and innovation purposes. Next slide, please. So the last <laughs> of the activities uh, within this collaborative exploration was a co-creation workshop between technology partners, invited artists, and public. Uh, at VAG, we, we always, or as much as possible, tend to organize all these efforts in a public space. Um, and what we focused on here, um, despite this were these COVID times and everything was only possible in digitally, we focused on five different challenges, like societal perspective on technologies, art-driven technologies, robotics out of factories, uh, humanizing technologies and new innovation pathways, to relate them to concerns that can apply to these challenges, because challenges can be quite positivistic, while, while some concerns can apply or can emerge uh, on, on this um, positivistic uh, way of thinking. And then what we ask our participants to design concern-driven robots, so robots that would apply and would respond to, this, uh, to all these concerns, and the last thing that we also did within this workshop, because we had so many different uh, stakeholders on board, was also that we mapped out knowledge that is required for this kind of efforts, knowledge that already exists, that is shared, and also the knowledge that is urgent. <clears throat> uh, so something that we really, that they think it's necessary for us to focus on. In this way, we got quite some understanding um, on what we should really focus with our open call. Uh, in this way, we got voices from the industry, from technology partners, but also from, 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 uh, from artists and also from workers. Um, so in this way, uh, I guess we will step into the next step, uh, into the open call, better equipped uh, and can better focus uh, yeah, for the innovation effort. So, uh, but before I wrap up, I also shared in, in a chat, just now at this moment, there is an um, announcement of the Starts Prize winners for this year. So I urge you to, to check that uh, because you can really see uh, where Starts really stands uh, at this moment uh, in this year. So thank you.